All right, let's talk the Apocrypha. I know y'all been waiting on this one, so let's dig into it. So this is going to be a shorter version of the video. I'm going to make a longer one this weekend that's more detailed. So this one is in response to my sister here who talks about the Apocrypha and made a video with some things that were uh, some things that were inaccurate and some things that were incomplete. This here is incomplete, she says, and if the Apocrypha were in the 1611 version of the King James Bible, why were they removed because they were originally and are still there in the 1611? Good question. So without having Having an accurate understanding of this, it seems like that that's something like says that the books of the Bible were taken out. So I'm going to demonstrate to you in a short that very good evidence that the sixth or excuse me, the Apocrypha were not a part of the inspired text of the Bible. They were considered for ecclesiastical purposes, for devotion, meditation, but they were never there to be canonized, to be part of standards of rule and practice and doctrine for the church. Let's demonstrate it. All right, so here is a list of the apocryphal books of the particular Old Testament. All of these books, please take note, were written in what is called the intertestamental period. The last book of the Old Testament was the book of Malachi, which was written somewhere prior to 400 BC. So in between 400 BC and 1 AD, around the time when Jesus Christ was born, these books of the apocrypha were written. So actually they were written in between 250 BC and 1 AD. They are written over 150 years after after the close of the Old Testament books, all right, again, in between the in, in the intertestamental period, here they are. Now, this is what the Old Testament canon actually looks like in the Hebrew Bible. This is the Bible that the Jews understood were the canonized books. You will see here there are only 22 books. Now, their 22 is the same as our 39. You'll see there that they have the book of First and Second Samuel as one book, Ezra and Nehemiah as one book, so on and so forth. So the way that they count their books is completely different than our 39, but it is the same 39 books. Theirs is just 22. Too. That's going to be important as we look at this source. So you can see here, Jewish historian Josephus, the most famous and most well-known Jewish historian, says here in his source, for we have not an innumerable multitude of books among us like the Greeks do. He says, but only 22 books, eight which contain the records of all the past time, so on and so forth. He breaks it down. You can read it for yourself. Let's go to the next one, he says. Watch what Josephus says. He says, and how firmly we have given credit to these books of our own nation is evident by what we do. For during so many ages as have already passed, no one has been so bold as to either add anything to them, to take anything from them, or to make any changes in them. Josephus is letting us know well after these apocryphal books were written. He is absolutely aware of them as a Jewish historian, but he is affirming for us as a Jew and as as a historian that the Jews never considered these books to be a part of their canon. I got more. Now, Eusebius is the most famous church historian of all time, and even he quotes in his book, uh, Ecclesiastical History, all right? And, and I'm not going to read all of that. Of course, you can pause for your own reading and everything, but he lists the same 22 books, same as our 39, that these were the only books that were a part of the Old Testament canon. That's two. And then we have St. Jerome, who is, is responsible for giving us the Latin Vulgate, um, and he was actually able to read Hebrew. He's one of the few people that came along that when he did translations of the Bible, he didn't translate it from the Septuagint or any other translation. He translated the scriptures directly from Hebrew. And even he affirms in the source here that the 22 books of the Old Testament or the 39 that we have are the only books that were a part of the canon. So here's three different sources, and I got more if necessary necessary that demonstrate that the Jews never considered the Apocrypha part of their canon. They were read and included and translated in the church for edifying purposes because they contain great information. They had stuff in there in the Maccabees about great things that happened in Jewish history. And so they were included uh, in the church and in translations and in later Bibles for the purpose of meditation and devotion, but they were never considered inspired. This is why you will see that in the 1611 King James Version of the Bible, they are listed in a completely different section. But let's keep going. 
Here are some reasons, and I'll go into more detail in this in my own video, why these books were never considered apart and rejected from the Old Testament canon. All right, number one, it was not written by any prophet of God. Again, this is confirmed even in looking at those scriptures. It was not written, confirmed by persons who perform acts of God. There are no miracles performed by those people to demonstrate that they were writing or acting on behalf of God. They don't always tell the truth. They encourage praying for the dead and working for salvation, things that are completely contradictory to statements that are made by people who were prophets and affirmed in the New Testament. They do not have the life transforming power of the word of God. They are not accepted by the Jews, which we've already talked about and given proof for. All right. They were not accepted by Jesus, the son of God, who never cited it. Let's go into detail on that one for a little bit. One quick, real quick. So here in Matthew 5, 17, he says, don't think that I come to abolish the law or the prophets. So you can see here that Jesus is affirming the law and the prophets. This was the Jewish way of describing the Old Testament canon. You'll see in another one place where he talks about the law, the prophets and the writings. Those were the way of describing the threefold division of the Old Testament. So if you see any time in the New Testament where someone says the law and the prophets or the law, the prophets and the writings, they're talking about the Old Testament canon which never includes the Apocrypha. And this is the source in Luke 24 and 27. And you'll see again, neither Jesus nor the apostles, they quote from every single book of the Old Testament canon, but never from the Apocrypha. That should tell you something. All right. Again, number seven, accepted by the uh, is not accepted by the apostles who never quoted. It. I just said that. Number eight, not accepted by the early church of God who never canonized it. It was rejected by the great Catholic translator, Jerome, who we talked about in his Latin Vulgate. It was not written during the time of the prophets. I just talked about that. All of the apocrypha were written in between 200 B.C. and following 200 years after the close of the canon. This is overwhelming evidence. They were not cited by the can in the canon by Jewish historian Josephus. I told you that. And then the conspicuous uh, absence of prophecy. This is overwhelming evidence that the Jews never considered the Apocrypha as part of their scriptures. And here's why. This was the standard for Old Testament canonization. Now, what they did was look in the in, in the books of the Old Testament, which were inspired to see and establish this standard by looking at what was the inherent standard of books that they knew were inspired. So they didn't impose their own standards upon this. They looked in the Old Testament books and realized the ones we have are uh, prophetic, are authoritative. They are authentic, et cetera, et cetera. So they're looking for inherent uh, clues of standardization and canonization in these particular books. And my favorite one is number two. They must be authoritative. You never see in the apocryphal books, thus saith the Lord, or when Jesus is referring to them in the New Testament, he calls them scriptures and it'll say it is written. They never refer to the apocrypha with things like that because it's clear they never understood them. They never considered them as inspired. And that's why you will never see statements like thus saith the Lord or the Lord says or anything like that in the apocryphal books. Now, this is dope here. If you go to this particular website, you can see here all of these different errors and how many errors um, there are in the books and contradictions. And this particular site I found this weekend gives you a detailed list of all the errors and the contradictions in the apocryphal books. This is the reason why these books were not accepted. When the Jews saw these errors, when they saw these things that contradicted the prophets, so on and so forth, they knew that these books were not inspired. So they had great information in them, but the purpose of the Bible is not to give us information, it is to give us revelation. All right, now. What happens with the Apocrypha is the same thing that happened with uh, the, uh, Eve in the Garden of Eden is that they were people or the enemy came in and tried to get Eve to believe that God was withholding information from her that was good. Everything she saw on the tree was good for food, pleasant to the eyes and desire to make one wise. And the devil told her. There's stuff that's missing that you're supposed to have that will make you like God. It's the same lie that people are perpetrating now by telling you that there's stuff in the Apocrypha that we need to know. There is good information in there, but there is no revelation in the Apocrypha. So I did an entire three hour presentation with every slide having sources in it um, this weekend. If you're interested in that, please go and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Greater Works. Um, you can get the link from in my bio. Uh, we go into detail on this particular subject. I had over 100 students in the class. Again, if you're looking for more detailed information on it, please check out that video. Love y'all. And I'll see you on a more detailed video this weekend. Blessings.